from my understanding, what deviance is is not so much something that's bad, it's just what society says is deviant. Deviant is like behavior that is away from the norm. It's one of those things you just kind of, you got to read in between the lines. Every city is going to have their own law. It's simple economics. A market is going to exist. The demand is going to be there. You're either going to legalize something and meet it at the same supply and demand as it's, it's being asked for that drug, or you're not. I learned a lot about um, marijuana, just the di just different um, aspects of it that I guess I really never thought of. I mean, I'm, I'm personally not for legalizing marijuana, but when we had the speaker come in and talk about how it should be decriminalized, um, I learned a lot. Tova Meyer, uh, he seemed like a, he was really energetic, he was a nice guy, and he spoke about how people get arrested for smoking weed and even with the littlest bit, it can, it'll go on their record for like two years, I think he said. So then these people become criminals for going after a natural demand that no one can deny. That demand has been there since the beginning of time, way before you, I, or anybody who's alive now. Obviously, you receive a legal prescription, you use it according to the prescription, not a problem. What often occurs is the uh, person who's prescribed those drugs use them in excess, uh, become dependent or addicted to them. Um, sometimes uh, other people who are associated with them get uh, access to those prescription drugs and use them improperly and illegally. Two problems, medical problem, uh, anyone who takes in excess runs the risk of addiction. Uh, that has additional uh, problems both medically, cost-wise, uh, rehabilitation, um, insurance costs, etc. I, I guess I never really thought about, yeah, should we ruin someone's life because they have a tiny little bit of marijuana on them? So then you talk about, you know, deviance. I talked to a couple people and I brought up the fact that this video would be on deviance and they all gave the same reaction. They all seemed like deviance, like, how is we deviant? There's not one certain thing that we could say in the whole world would be deviant to everybody. It's not just about marijuana. We want to live a certain way. And we, and, and we want to dictate how our cities are going to build and how we're going to live. I worry that by doing this, is this going to lead to maybe in the next 10 years, while well, crack's not that bad, we should just legalize it. Or what is that going to say to the younger generation that, well, it's not really that big of a deal, you just get a ticket. We wouldn't want 10-year-old kids out there skipping class and, and doing it behind the playground. As a police officer, I have to deal with that stuff on the street. They don't dictate policy, they enforce it. And for a lot of police, they're just going to arrest people because that's the law. Possession uh, of any of those types of prescription drugs could be anywhere from a two-year felony offense to as high as a um, seven-year felony offense just for possession. If you share those prescription drugs with someone or even give them away or uh, trade them in exchange for anything, not just money, uh, then the penalties get quite severe. It could be anywhere from a four-year felony up to a 20-year felony just for sharing those prescription drugs. And decriminalizing is, isn't always a bad thing. You're gonna find a lot of it out there. Um, what they did is made it from a misdemeanor to a civil infraction. Um, the difference between a misdemeanor and a civil infraction is a misdemeanor you can spend um, anywhere from 90 days to no more than one, uh, one year in jail. Which costs taxpayers, you know, all kinds of money to, to house people in jail for something as small as, as a, not even $5 worth of marijuana. If they get caught with it, then their college might be over because their loans could get taken away and they might not be able to get a job too after that. So now you have a felony record, certain uh, things go with that. Lack of ability to get jobs, lack of lo federal loans because of felony convictions or drug convictions. So it's, it's a double-edged sword. I think crime will go down in the sense that you're not arresting, you know, a typical fair state student for a joint. You're not arresting some hipster for a $5 bag of weed. So yeah, arrest rates will go down, which would lower crime. FDA comes in and says you're, you're not claiming, um, or, uh, you know, like Yaz, I believe, was sued civilly. 
So there is that economic penalty for companies that do that, either through fines through the federal government or through uh, judgments through civil courts. Um, but criminally, uh, very rarely is someone going to be criminally responsible for those claims. Um, I, I, number one, you're dealing with a corporation. Difficult to pinpoint people who would be necessarily criminally responsible like you do for other types of criminal acts. So generally when dealing with corporations and things like that, they think that uh, they target more of the fine aspect because that hurts corporations as opposed to individuals who are usually punished in other forms. Something we say is illegal, right? We understand that, right? And this is still illegal. It goes from a misdemeanor to a civil infraction. Um, a civil infraction is just like a speeding ticket. You're just gonna get a ticket, you're gonna pay a small fine. Um, and it's not gonna weigh as much on your, uh, your record as a, a misdemeanor would. Legally, anyone who is in possession or who has used a prescription drug improperly is considered a crime. And in the state of Michigan, most offenses for illegal use of prescription drugs are felony offenses. Someone taking a Vicodin pill and smoking weed necessarily dangerous to society? Are they contributing to the disruption of society? Is this something criminal justice system should take care of? Or is this something that maybe they need moral support from their family or they need medical support from their healthcare physician? If you are not prescribed those uh, particular drugs, um, or you know, you're in possession of, of those that are not prescribed to you. That's where the law in terms of prescription drugs is broken. It's too harsh of a punishment for people. I think it, I think it could be for the better. I just don't see locking them in a cage as A, helping society by any means. It's like alcohol. If you're driving under the influence of even a prescribed drug, but it affects you to the effect, to the, to the point where you um, drive inappropriately and either cause serious injury or death, uh, just like drunk driving, you can be charged with that. Operating under the influence of a controlled substance, causing serious injury or death. And that's a five year or a 15 year felony. It's just taking up time in the courts, and they just want to make it a slap on the wrist and focus on other things. Even though society thinks that it's so deviant or so bad, I don't, even though I don't personally agree with it being legal, I don't feel that it should be as criminalized as what it is. If, if you're given the valid prescription for those, and you're taking those, you're not going to be deemed to be uh, illegal. Uh, in your possession and, and uh, ingestion of those. If it makes people feel better and can help them heal somehow, then I'm all for that. You know, some of these drugs uh, are um, uh, uh, depressants to help them deal with stresses. Uh, some are to give them, you know, uh, stimulants to give them more energy. So they're using them while they work or to do their daily uh, um, jobs or whatnot. Uh, but also, you know, people who are uh, unemployed uh, or on the lower economic uh, strata as well uh, for the same reasons, you know, to avoid uh, stresses, to avoid pain, to feel better. Um, so it, it really, you saw all kinds of, of people in every walk of life who would find themselves, not intentionally, but would find themselves eventually abusing legally prescribed drugs. I've done the research in the past for the police academy in my law enforcement classes that marijuana has never really taken someone's life in and itself like prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, all those things are legal but you got to be 18 years or older to buy it. So the best thing is just like cigarettes or anything is or like they do in like some parts of Europe is to package it, tax it, regulate it, take out the underground markets, take the violence off of it. And, and also, there's a market for these. So there's a, there's a money uh, aspect to these as well. Uh, if people can not get them through a prescription, they're looking for the person who has them to buy them illegally as well. So between money and, and the effects that prescription drugs have, uh, a lot of people in every walk of life are abusing them. And in America, at least one thing we have is the fact of the matter is if we can stand up and we can, we can vote and we can petition, you can do it, and I encourage people 
to take a little bit of time out or to really push their community, not only will they feel well internally that they're helping their community and they're building towards what they want, but they are helping change the future.